Okay, today I'm going to show you how you can help yourself balance in ballet. So first you need to know where your center of gravity needs to be right over contact point with the ground. Right now, I have contact point throughout my whole foot. So if it's anywhere there, you can stay balanced. Same with if you pull into a leve, it's only it's a small area, so it's going to be harder to balance. Next thing is when you lift your part of your body up, it changes your center of gravity from right here, where I can stay balanced, it's going to pull it up into the side. So if I let go, I fall over. So that's why if you're lifting up and it's right here, you shift your body this th to the other side so that you can stay there and your center of gravity is over your contact point. The next thing is that you might be able to balance forever, but eventually you're going to start wobbling around and you're not going to be able to stay. So to help fix that, there's two things you can do. You can change your contact point with the ground by if you're falling, say back, you can step step back to help yourself stay there. Or you can shift your center of gravity so if you're falling to one side, shift your body the other way and your center of gravity will be back over your contact point the ground. And that's how you can help yourself balance. One. Right now I'm going to show you how you can help yourself in a ground to take. So first thing you know is that to follow the trajectory or the path of the gonche, if you plot your vertical height, it's going to be a parabola, graph and an arc. But if you, the horizontal, if you have the horizontal place, it's just going to keep going straight because you don't have a force acting against you. So your trajectory is always going to be the same. You can't change your trajectory once you've left the ground. So if you want there to be a specific, certain thing, but you have to make sure that if you necessarily want really high and then come down, you have to push off the ground harder. But once you leave the ground, you can't change anything about it. The main thing I want to show you is the, the illusion of floating, which a lot of people like because it looks very, looks nice all the ways. So what happens is if you have a very, when you're starting off on the ground, your legs are very high. Once you get to the very, very far height of it and your legs are raising, when your legs raise up, that's raising your center of gravity. So the distance between your center of gravity and your head is becoming smaller than before, so it's going like this, and you're going to have a smaller center of gravity between your head, your center of smaller distance between your center of gravity and your head, which is going to create the illusion that you're floating at the very peak of your jump or your leap. So, it'll, it'll, and so if you change, also you can move the placement of your arms, so if you do something specific with your arms, do a certain port of bra, or the way you lift your head, it will create the illusion of floating. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how you can help your preparation of a, for a pirouette. First thing is that if you have the same force when your feet are closer or further apart, the force will create a larger torque when your feet are further apart, so you'll have much more rotational momentum and power to get around your turn, so it can help if your feet are farther apart. Another thing is, but I guess a drawback to that would be that your center of gravity is about here, and so it has farther distance to go than if it's right here, it's just it's staying in the same place, it's just lifting up. So that's one thing that you might want to think about. Another thing is that if you have a deeper plie, your torque has longer time to generate, basically, and so it'll generate a large rotational momentum, which will also help you turn faster. So if you have a very small plie, that's almost no rotational momentum compared to a very, very deep plie. If you think about it when you're jumping, if you can jump much higher, then you go like that. The next thing is your arms. When you pair your arms, they can wind up. And all the most people don't do this because it looks pretty ugly. They can gain more rotational momentum, and they can the rotational momentum that you're making with your feet pressing to the ground, they can store that. And so when you turn, once they catch up with your body, it'll have a greater turn rate. Last thing I forgot to mention was that two thirds of your weight should be on your front foot and one third on the back. If it's all on your front foot, you have nothing to push off of. If it's all on your back foot, you have a lot, a very, very far distance to transfer your weight. Now that's all I have to tell you for preparations. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how when you rise into to start your turn, when you're rising up to begin your turn, what you can do to help that. So when you rise up, all the torque that you had, you can't create any more torque. It all, it all ends up gone, basically, because there's no 
thing, nothing to push you, no extra forces, there's no force that can act to push. So you have to make sure you have enough rotational momentum to get yourself all the way around. Some teachers will tell you, go up and then turn, which doesn't work because there's no torque to let you turn. So that basically cannot be done. One thing you can do to generate a larger torque and generate larger rotational momentum, well, just as I said in preparation, larger plie that helps generate more rotational momentum, which will help you turn. Also, as you rise up, keep pushing off the ground as you rise up. So push as you rise, because that will help the torque is going to get um, longer time for the torque to act, and that will give you more rotational momentum. Thank you. Okay, now I'm going to help you understand how you can balance while you're turning. First thing you know is some positions that you stay balanced in while you aren't turning, you can't always hold those positions. So if you're out here, that's something you could balance right here, but sometimes in a turn, this, you have to change your position because the centrifugal forces, which are really just forces that want you to keep going straight out, they'll pull on you and that causes you to topple over. So sometimes you will have to adjust either your contact point with the floor, so if you're here, you might have to scoot it this way a little bit, something you might have to change. That's one thing you need to understand. Next thing is that sometimes you become off balance while you're turning. And what happens, you need to, the same adjustments need to be made as if you weren't turning. Same adjustments I was talking about while we did balance section. So if you can make those quickly enough to where you start turning, you feel they are buzzing, you can make it very quickly then you'll be able to stay balanced for the rest of your turn. But if you cannot make those changes and adjustments quickly enough, you'll be still off balance and it'll probably topple over. These adjustments that you make, it's mainly just changing your center of gravity, so if you know you're falling back, to pull forward. But as you turn, when you're pulling your body that way, it ends up being another way, so you have to pull back. So you have to make very quick adjustments to be able to stay on your balance. Otherwise, if you can't do that, you need to rely on when you first come up to go into your turn, initial balance and be already balanced before you start to turn. That's how you can stay balanced. Thank you. Okay, now I'm going to talk to you about how you can help yourself keep turning while once you've started your turn. So once you've started to turn and say you're turning in right to right, well, your rotational inertia, if that is, if you can decrease your rotational inertia, it'll increase how you're, fast you're turning. So to decrease your rotational inertia, the point from the outermost point to your center of gravity becomes smaller. So if you've ever seen someone turn, or maybe an ice skater turning and they pull their arms in here, it helps them to turn a lot faster. And that's what helps you move much faster. And it's actually making your body go faster, but because of friction, you're really going, it looks like you're going at the same rate, but for more turns. And then to end your turn, what's basically happening is when you put both feet flat on the ground, there's more friction. So that the friction basically slows you down and stops you. So you can stop and the arms are extended. And so that will also slow everything down. And you basically are going to a large position that slows everything. So that's how you can do that and end your turn.